Hey art fiends, welcome back to the channel. As I promised, this is a continuation of a series I started very recently in which I take characters that you all submitted and I give them some critiques and do some redesigning. The first part of this series did really well. People seem to really, really like it and I'm very happy that people liked my feedback and the amount of submissions I got after that video increased tenfold. <laughs> So, of course, that means I have to continue the series so I could possibly get to everyone at some point. Because I did get so many submissions, there were a lot of characters I got that I didn't feel I could really do a lot to. So, I know this is only part two and there will be more parts after this, but say part 10 comes around and you submitted your character in part two, then that most likely means I had nothing to say about your character. Some of the character designs I got, the description was way too intricate about the world itself and gave me little to no information about this character or the information I got about the character was absolutely nothing and I have nothing to work on. <laughs> so a lot of the ones that I will end up choosing are going to be ones that had a good description that I could understand and had some obvious design choices that I thought could be worked on. Like in the last video, the big things I will be looking at are color choices and clothing choices. The hair will sometimes be changed. Most of the time I probably will just keep the hairstyle you decided on unless there is a very obvious character choice as to maybe giving them a different haircut. Like the last video, I'm going to be looking at five characters that were submitted to me. I'm going to be reading the descriptions I was given and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think we can change and then we're going to go right into the actual redesign. So without further ado, let's hop on in to the first one, shall we? So. This first character was submitted on my Discord by user Ditto is Best Boy. The short description that they gave is that this character is Awanita. Forgive me if I said that wrong. He lives in a human forest away from civilization because he is cursed to become a Wendigo every new moon or when he gets really, really mad. But he lives a pretty normal life as a baker. He has the power to shapeshift. He is calm, caring, and shy. He is often lonely and has trouble socializing. And when he does, he is often blunt. He has very low self-esteem due to this curse. He loves to bake and draw, but he usually thinks that he's not very good at it. His biggest fear is hurting people because of his rage. All right, so this person actually provided three forms for this character, but I'm just gonna be focusing on their human form. Monster creature designs are not my forte, so I don't have much to say about the Wendigo design. The only only knowledge I have about what a Wendigo is is that they are formed when somebody cannibalizes. If you eat another human, you basically become a Wendigo, at least that's what the lore is. I don't know if that is the same with this Wendigo and I, I'm not gonna try to ask and try to go into that, so I'm gonna ignore the monster form. We're gonna only focus on his human form instead. For his design, I actually think the biggest thing is to work on his outfit. Right now, he doesn't say baker and that's his profession, so we wanna push into that. Kind of looks more like a thief in this cape and he has the little hunting knife too. And I think we can also push just some of the character posing as well. He's a very shy character. He isn't very proud of himself for his work. I think we can really try and get some of these character traits out in his posing, maybe play around with his hair a little bit. Yeah, and from there, hopefully this guy will become less of a generic fantasy thief character and more of this interesting loner character with a curse. All right, so let's just start drawing now, shall we? Okay, so let's talk about the things I did with this character. So the very first thing was the pose. I gave him this hunched over, very worried pose. I wanted to emphasize his shy demeanor and how he's scared of a lot of things. I also have him crossing his arms because I decided to have him holding a bunch of loaves of bread just to help show that he's a baker to emphasize his career. As for the specifics on the actual design features, his hair, I kept the same. I liked the very long shaggy hair for 
for a character who is kind of reserved and quiet. Something you could consider is even making his bangs longer to cover his eyes a little more, but that's up to you. I decided not to do that because I always enjoy seeing the eyes of a character, but it's just a thought. For the rest of his outfit, I actually have a bunch of various Baker fantasy characters that I kind of just found online just to see some references of what some people were doing for designing a Baker in a kind of fantasy-esque world. So one major thing is I really wanted to give him an apron since that seems to be the most common feature between all four of these characters that I was looking at. Instead of the cape, I swapped that with the apron. For the rest of his outfit, I honestly didn't really touch too much. I kept his top shirt with this short sleeves, but since he's now wearing this apron and it's covering his front half, I kind of nixed the length of the shirt. I made it just tucked under his pants and under the tie as well. And his shoes I thought were perfectly fine so I kept those as well. And I just kept the pants and I made sure to show that they are tucked into the shoes as well. I also decided to give him gloves since bakers tend to wear mittens at least when they take stuff out of the oven. So I thought giving him gloves would be a good idea. And if he is this cursed character, maybe there's something about his hands as well. He doesn't like to touch people, so that could also be a thing. I don't know the specifics of this curse, but maybe something like this is something you can think about on more reasons as to why he should have gloves. In my lining process, I actually decided to give him bags under his eyes. He seems like the type of character who doesn't get a lot of sleep. He's probably constantly worried about literally everything around him at all times of day, including nighttime. So I thought giving him bags under his eyes would be a nice little touch to show some weariness in this character. All right, so colors. I tried to stick close to your original color scheme. The colors themselves you picked work well together. It was just a bit of adjusting some of the brightness and saturation of some of your color choices. So first off, was his skin and his hair. So I actually used your other two drawings that you had of him as a deer and him as a wendigo. When looking at all three characters that are supposed to be one character lined up, you actually picked different colors for each of these forms. His fur as a deer is darker than his skin and his hair as a human. And then as a wendigo, he has a lighter color for his bone color. And then his fur is black, which doesn't match at all his brown from any of the other things. So even though I'm not actually redesigning your other two forms, there could be something here that you can think about when you go into these forms as picking your color choices. So I think what's important is to make sure that you match colors between all three of these forms or else how is anyone supposed to know that it's actually him? Specifically the Wendigo form, I think that black fur, 100% not him. It's a whole different character with the black fur. So if you want to stick with the brown, I would suggest unifying the brown color from the fur, the hair, and then the fur again in all three forms. So after looking at those forms and picking colors from both of them, I went with the brown that you actually chose for the deer form. For both the brown fur and then the light tufts of fur, I'm not entirely sure what to specifically call them, but those two brown colors I picked for the hair and for the skin. I think those two colors are honestly better than the ones you picked for the human form. His hair in a human form I think was too saturated and his skin was just too light. I think having his skin be very sickly looking being that kind of off brownish color really emphasizes that this character is you know shut away and he is cursed in some way because he kind of looks like he's a little sick as well as the desaturation of his hair also helps to make him kind of blend in more. He doesn't want to be noticed, so picking some colors that really don't shine out are important. For his eyes, I kept the blue since that seems to be the color you want to use to emphasize his Wendigo form. So there's nothing wrong with that. I just chose a blue that wasn't all the way on the side of the color palette, like the brightest blue. <laughs> I just desaturated just a little bit. Now for the rest of him, like I said, your color choices aren't that bad. So I wanted to keep within the realm of the original colors, but I was also looking at the references I was using to kind of get a better understanding of what colors can be used for these clothing items. So for his shirt, I kept it that brown range, but I actually darkened it a lot. So it's more towards that color of the bag you have. 
again, this is because he probably doesn't want to stand out. So especially if he's living in the forest, I kind of want to pick darker colors that'll blend into the trees. I then went into his apron. I wanted to make it some type of green since that is the color of his cape and I wanted the apron to kind of be his new cape. But instead of that crazy bright green you had, I thought it would be a good idea to make it more of this olive color, something that was more in tune with colors of nature and not such a bright color that he'd stand out with it. So I played around with a variety of dark green brown colors and I think I found one that doesn't blend in too much to his outfit and also still has that green tint that his original had. So then I picked a color for the tie around his waist which I wanted to relate to the brown you had for the pouch. So I just picked a dark brown. He has a little collar on his shirt. I thought that would be a nice touch and it relates to the collars on all of the references I was looking at. For that color I just kind of made this off-white color. For his gloves at first I wasn't sure how dark I wanted to go but I decided in order to lessen the amount of colors on this color palette I would match it to the color of the tie around his waist so that there will be more unified sections within the color palette. I actually preferred a lighter color for the gloves so then that became the color for the tie around the waist which ended up working because for his pants I decided to stick with that dark color you had for his pants and since the tie was now a lighter color it didn't blend in with the pants so it worked out pretty well. I then colored in the bread just a random brown. Those are not part of his design, so they are whatever. And then for the shoes, I again wanted to stick with the color palette that I had already. I didn't want to keep adding way too many shades. So I made the base color of the shoes the brown color that the gloves are. And then I made the inner part of it the uh, color of his shirt so that there are unified colors. I then tried to do the white that you had on the original for the flaps on the shoes, but I thought it just kind of stood out too much on the shoes and didn't really make sense to have three colors. So I decided to then just make it the lighter color instead of white. So yeah, that is gonna be it for this character. I don't know where you're gonna go next with this, but I hope some of this was helpful. Like I say all the time, you don't have to do anything I say. These are all just suggestions and ideas that maybe will help the character. And if they are nothing that you're looking for, that's fine too. Maybe it'll help when doing other character designs in the future as well. It is now time for our second character for this video. This character was submitted on my Discord once again by user Himiko Yuhumeno. They gave a very, 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 very long description, which is not what I wanted. I want short descriptions, but that's okay. I'm going to short in it for you guys. If you want to read the whole thing, it's going to be on green, but I'm just going to do a summary when I read it. So this character, his name is Lo. He's 15. He is a witch and he has the energy trait of fire, which is probably something from this universe. His familiar is a fennec fox. A very, very shortened version of this bio is he was orphaned when he was born and was sent to an orphanage. When he was a little older, he became part of a cult but because of being in this cult he kind of went a bit insane <laughs> for his personality he only shows happiness because he thinks emotion is a weakness so he basically doesn't have them he's always on guard and ready to strike so he kind of just always looks a bit crazy. He never ever frowns unless it's with someone he really trusts. Otherwise, he is always putting on this fake smile. There's a whole lot more about some story stuff. It's all just kind of extra. It's not going to help hinder or change the design choice I made. My biggest thing is I'm not entirely sure what time period this takes place in, but I'm going to make some assumptions, and I'm so sorry in advance if I assume wrong. So just some notes on things that his design design could get worked on to help further, you know, this character that you've described. First off is the clothes. I don't see Colt. Nothing about his clothes look like Colt outfit. 
at all. And he's also a witch, so I feel like you can play with witch outfits and like cultish kind of looks mixed together to kind of really get this character. He also has too much bright on him. Nix all the bright. We're getting rid of that. You know, this is gonna be a dark evil character and we're gonna show it. The next thing is you call him a fire controlling witch, but I don't see elements of fire anywhere in his design. So we're gonna play around with that as well. And then finally, he doesn't look crazy. You know, the way you describe them does not look like this image. He kind of looks like a happy friend <laughs> in this image and you want to really push that crazed thing you're going for. And you also talk about Fennec Fox and it being his familiar. Usually a familiar is, you know, an animal that follows you around. It's kind of like your partner in crime. But the way you described it kind of seemed as if he can transform into a Fennec Fox, which isn't actually what a familiar is. I guess you'd call that something else. But if you'd rather it be a transformation thing, I think we could put some of the character traits of a Fennec Fox into his design as well. So I'm just gonna start drawing and we're gonna talk through what I do as I go. So first off was getting down a pose. I really wanted to emphasize how insane this character is. And like I said, I think the pose you have him in right now does not show that. So I went for this kind of like arms outstretched, come to me, I am preaching to you look. And I made sure to give him that super big grin on his face. In order to also emphasize how nuts he is, I had his head tilted back and I gave him very tight Tiny pupils. A very easy trick to make someone look crazy is to give them very tiny pupils in their eyes. I actually didn't stray too far from his original hair. I decided it worked pretty well, especially because I wanted to push the whole fire thing with this character. So I tried to draw his hair out kind of like they were flames coming from his head. So I just kept the really wavy, crazy look. I also think the long, crazy hair as well is really good on a psychotic character. Or something about extremely untamed hair that uh, makes someone look insane. You also don't have ears on your drawing, but I decided to give him really big ears because he has the Fennec Fox related to him, and Fennec Fox is their number one trait that I think most people think of when they think of a Fennec Fox is their really, really big ears. I thought giving low really big ears as well would help connect him to this familiar he has. Now, when I came up with his outfit, I had a few references up, a bunch of witches, and then of course the foxes. Yes, these are females, and this is a male, but I think the basic idea of a witch comes through no matter what their gender is. Since he is in a cult, I really like the idea of giving him this really dark outfit and this big long cape, and the whole like cape thing also relates to being a witch. I had this image in my brain of kind of like movie cults where they're all just in hooded robes and they're chanting around some sort of altar. I also DM'd a D&D game where there was a cult that was actually running the entire town and they all wore these big robes that covered their face and their body and they all looked super evil. So I really wanted to kind of get that idea into this character. So I decided to give him this really big long cape with a hood as well that he could pull over. Like I said, I'm not really entirely sure what time period this takes place in, but you gave him modern clothes so I kind of thought I'd push the modern thing as well and stick in that realm. I didn't change his shirt from a collared shirt. I think it was perfectly fine design wise not color wise. We'll talk about colors later and instead I made it long sleeve. Same with his shorts. The way you do those shorts make them look like these <laughs> big poofy clown shorts and I don't think that's something you want this whole member to look like a clown so I gave him pants instead and then for his shoes I went for these really big pointy kind of of witch boots and I kind of wanted all of it to cover most of his body. He's going to be kind of like in the shadows so I wanted to make sure he was really covered up. I also decided to just quickly draw the fox behind him too. The way you drew the fox was kind of like it was a spirit so I thought I would just throw it behind him as well. Kind of have this little extra thing in his character. Okay so colors. I had some personal issues with some of the colors you chose in his design. I do not enjoy bright colors. That's just a me thing. You may really like bright colors, but I have a really hard time looking at them for long periods of time. Thankfully, your character doesn't have them everywhere. They're just kind of accent colors, but the fact that you chose a super duper saturated bright pink and a super duper saturated bright blue just 
kills me. Those two colors do not work well together. They are both so bright and they make me think of like red and blue lines when you are fixing art. <laughs> uh, they stand out too much and I'm sorry if you don't like this, but I'm nixing the blue and the pink. They're out of here. They are horrible color combination. <laughs> blue and pink can work together. I'm not saying these colors can't work together, but it's the specific shade of blue and pink that you chose. It's hard for me to look at it. That's all I'll say. <laughs> With that out of the way, that'll give you some ideas of what I did going into this. this. Hair, like I said, I really wanted to treat it like fire, but I didn't want to stray too far from your brown. So instead I made it kind of this strawberry blonde to give it also a connection to the fennec fox because the fennec foxes are this very light red. So I thought that it would connect to the animal as well as fire. For his skin too, I also made it redder. I have noticed that every single person seems to use the same skin tone for white people. I don't know why. Out of the five from last video and the two I've done so far, I think about four of them who have been the white characters have all had the exact same peach color chosen for skin. So I'm gonna say this to every single person out there. You can have more than one character who is white, but they don't all gotta have the same skin tone. Not every white person has the same skin tone. I know that's probably something you've never thought about before, but like me personally, I'm extremely tan because I have Italian in my blood and we tan like crazy. So even though I'm a white person, I have a darker complexion compared to say my friend who is Irish, who is just no pigment at all in her skin. <laughs> Relating that to here, I thought giving him more of a redder tone in his skin would help to relate him to the fire that he has. Okay, so then is his eyes, which is the first place that your pink and blue come together. And I'm so sorry, I got rid of his heterochromia. You never stated in your description why he had heterochromia. Like if it had something to do with his powers, then I would understand. Since I had no reason to keep it, I decided to give him two of the same colored eyes, but I kept the kind of pink color you had since again, I want to relate this to fire and pink is part of the red family. I just darkened it a bit. I didn't use your extremely saturated pink. Then it came time to the clothes. I wanted to make sure he looked dark and menacing. So I went into it thinking all of his clothes were gonna be some kind of black color or gray color. But I also wanted to keep him kind of reddish again because of the whole fire thing. And having this kind of one color that unifies the whole character also really helps. Especially cause if you use a lot of grays and you just use gray with no pigment in it, it just gets boring to look at. <laughs> so to give him a bit of personality in his clothing choices, it's good to pick a bit of a pigmented color, even when doing blacks. I go through quite a few shades and I even use my adjustment layers to darken some of this even more because I thought even a little bit of a light gray was too light for him. I wanted this to be this dark color completely. For the little brooch in the middle of his cloak, I decided to implement your blue and your pink right here. I made the outer part the blue color, but I made it more of a silvery blue. And then the inside I made that pink you had, but I lightened it a lot as if it's kind of a gem. I don't shade here, but if I did shade, then it would be kind of a gem-like thing in the center. So again, with the pan, Pants and the shoes, I went for that black. I kind of tried to do a little bit based off of your original colors, but again, I thought they were a little bit too light even. So I do do some adjusting and darkening them a bit. And then after that, when I was looking at the palette, I realized I used so many different shades and I wanted to use less colors. So I changed some of the cuff colors to match each other, just so there was way less colors to pick between his outfit and it kind of unifies it. And then for the fox, I just colored the whole thing, the hair color that he has, and then I made the line art his eye color. And then I just uh, lowered the opacity of the inside color. And then that makes this weird transparent fox floating behind him. So that is it for this character. I will say it again. You do not have to do anything I say. These are just my personal takes and just a bit of critique. And if you don't apply any of this, that is perfectly fine. Like I said, I think I'm missing some information about 
about the world. So if I got something wrong, I'm sorry. But if it's not him you apply this to, maybe there's other characters that you create that some of this can apply to. Okay, so let's go on to the next character. This one is short and simple, which is what I like. It was submitted by another user on my Discord. User Kokichi Ooma has a top tier username. They submitted this character right here. Very cute. I very much enjoy this character. And they gave a very short and sweet description that kind of just gave me everything I need to know. Their name is Ghost Lee. They are a demon who doesn't want to kill. They died and went to hell in 1933. He is lonely and and he used to be a human, but he can't remember his past. Very straight to the point, and I think that says a lot already about this character. This design has a lot of potential, and I think it's just a bit of really fleshing out some of your choices. So some notes I just took. First thing is making this character look more like a ghost. He looks kind of like he's floating slime right now, very much because of those bubbles you have coming off of him. So I think we can attempt to make it more ghost than slime monster. Then is that TV head you gave them. TV head characters are cool, for sure. Like the idea a lot, but I think since you specified that he died in 1933, it would be really cool if we could implement a TV from that time period instead of a modern TV. So we're gonna see if we could do that. Old fashioned TV sets are really cool. So we're gonna see what we can make out of it. The only other thing is his heart and I'm gonna see if we can kind of place it a little better on his body or whatnot. Like I said, great character design, but there's probably a bit of we can we could do to really oomph this a lot. This one is very simple compared to quite a few of the other ones I've done. So there isn't going to be too much we have to really change. Let's just go into it, shall we? So let's talk about what I did with this character. First off, I found what TVs looked like in the 1930s. Quite bulky, I will say, and had that as a reference so I could see what the head would look like. I then kind of sketched out this ghostly form since it's a ghost, no legs needed, and as well as just some arm placement. And then I kind of played around with the specifics of what I was going to do really with this TV. When looking at the one from the 1930s, I thought it'd be a really cool idea if the eyes were in the screen like you have, but the mouth was the bars that are below the screen. I think it's a kind of radiator thing so the TV doesn't overheat. Well, whatever it was, I thought those would be a really cool thing to use as the mouth so that the eyes could be the screen. So when this character emotes, the screen can change and then its mouth would be this bar that can move around. Then it was into the pose. I kind of went for this like dreamlike pushed out body. I'm not entirely sure why. Just kind of fit to me. So I wanted to kind of do, I think what you were trying to go for with your blobs that you have, a really good way to differentiate liquid slime from a ghostly form is instead of having one solid mass that seems to be coming off of the character is to kind of have it in pieces, giving a really rough form for breaking off from the body with a variety of bits, not just one glob. I also really like your detached hand thing, so I didn't want to get rid of that. And I kept his claws as well with their very massive hands. Really enjoy that. And then for the heart, I actually decided to kind of make this 3D shape that's coming out of the body, kind of as if it's a button that you can press. And I think that also relates it back to the whole TV thing, because all these old TVs have knobs on them that you could turn. So the heart kind of is that. I I had some fun with the line art on this one, you'll see. Since it's such a rectangular shape, especially for the screen, I did a lot of shape stuff. That's a trick for you out there. Don't force yourself to try to draw straight lines when you're drawing boxes. Use the square tool. It's your best friend. <laughs> and just use a lot of layers. So colors, your original colors, you gave me this palette. You only have three colors. And I attempted to see what those would look like, you know, placed on each other on the character since they weren't placed on the character in your version. And I didn't really enjoy how some of these colors were playing off one another and they also didn't really say ghost to me so I'm gonna take some liberties with how I go about the colors for this. I still try to use the colors you had but I just changed you know what specifically they are like your purple and your light pink or peach you have for the heart. I think the body color I ended up changing a bit from the green you had. So for the purple I darkened it a lot. I thought that was too saturated especially for this ghost character and I actually ended up using the purple on kind of the rim of the screen and the mouth and the eye in the center 
as well as the claws on the fingers. You'll see it takes me a long time to be satisfied with the color placement on this. Even for such a simple character, I spend quite a bit of time really trying to put the colors in the right place. So for the body, it kind of has this like greenish tint, but I lightened it a lot, so I made it a bit more white. You'll see on this, I play around a lot with my hues and my saturations and my brightness bars. Using the adjustment layers are such a great way to just quickly see small adjustments on one specific color. So I totally recommend doing adjustment layers when you're trying to pick colors. I ended up adding another color. I know you only have three in your original palette, but this character now has four colors because I wanted the TV head to have a lighter tone than the heart has. And I wanted the TV head to be a different color than the body. I wanted it to kind of be more brown or red to relate it back to the old fashioned TV. And I decided to go more red so it could match to the heart so that the colors are within the same range. But I also wanted the heart to be the most saturated, I think, of all of them. Something that'll stand out the most. And then just to like really help show that this is a ghost, I color the line art by not making it black. It helps a lot to show that this is a ghostly form, especially if you're not using opacity. So a good way you could also show that this is a ghost is by just lowering the opacity of the color so that things will see through it. But if you don't do that, then a good thing to do is to change the line art color and not use a pure black and instead use just kind of a lighter tone. Yeah, so that is it for this character. The original has a lot of good potential traits to it, so don't feel like you have to use anything I said. Once again, these are just some thoughts that I had while looking at your character. And if you wish to use them, go for it. If not, that is totally fine as well. All right, so let's go on to our fourth character then, shall we? So this one was submitted by MID Productions on my Discord. We got a pretty straightforward description, so let's just go through it. So this character, his name is Hugo Bosher. He is 25, he is a human. He grew up in the streets of France and then moved to a Japanese island city. Hugo rose as one of the most dangerous yet humble gang leaders in the entirety of the city. Compared to the Yakuza crawling around, he is much more brutal in his attacks, but is able to maintain a very civil composure when faced with a more political opponent. He lives with his older sister Patria, as well as his gang members in the midst of the abandoned part of downtown area. Also know Hugo for being undeniably strong in his devotion to Catholicism, despite challenging this with his sexuality on a regular basis. His official nickname in the city is the Holy Butcher. All right, so this character sounds super interesting. I love a good hardened criminal who has a soft side as well. So a couple things that I think aren't working in the design choices you made that we could do some changes to. First off are those colors. I think I talked about this in my last video about using pastels. I love pastels, but if you're trying to tell a serious story, I would stray as far away from pastels as possible. They give a very childish vibe to the drawing as soon as you start using them, specifically when you use a lot of them so it's different if maybe you have like one or two pastels but if your entire character is just all pastel colors you're ruining the essence that you're trying to give from this character it makes it look soft and childish and friendly i don't think those three things are what you're trying to get from this character at all at least that's vibe i got when reading a description i never ever saw pastel colors in my brain when i was reading about this character so we're gonna have to do a lot about the colors and changing those up. Related to the colors is his outfit. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Not into the outfit. I don't really think it works for this character at all. Maybe a different character could pull this outfit off, but this gang leader is not pulling off his outfit. He doesn't really seem like a gang leader. It's okay to show skin, but I think he's showing too much skin. <laughs> he's the leader of the bunch. Gotta remember that. And you also want this to take place in Japan. I know you didn't specify he is a Yakuza, but you know, you brought up Yakuza and that is what are the gangsters in Japan. And I think we can take some of the fashion related to kind of this gangster mentality and play it with your character. I also 
don't know what time period this takes place in, but your outfit choice you gave him makes it kind of look like this is medieval times. And Japan did not go through the same medieval times <laughs> that Europe did. They had a very different fashion sense in Japan during those years than Western world had. And his outfit screams Western. I know he's from France, but he is working in Japan. He is running everything in Japan. He would dress as the Japanese do. So I don't know if this is supposed to be a medieval kind of time, I'm gonna go with a more modern look for him. If I am wrong, forgive me, but if this is something medieval, maybe think about what people wore in, say, the Soji era in Japan or something old like that. You know, maybe he's more of a kimono kind of wearing guy. That's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make it more modern, but just a thought to think about if I got my time period wrong. And then I'm just gonna, you know, do a bit fixing up of this pose. It's a very neutral pose, which is totally fine for reference sheets, but especially his face. I'm having a hard time figuring out his expression. His side profile, he looks like he is hardened and mean, but then his front profile, he kind of looks really sad. There's just something about the way you drew him in his front image that he looks like he's about to cry, and I don't think that is what you want him to look like. So we're gonna do something with that. I'm gonna say in advance, I know absolutely squat diddly nothing about Catholicism. Literally zip zip zero nada. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of probably take some of your design elements with all of the crosses into what I do because that's as good as I'm gonna get. So just a warning to other people out there if you send me a character with religion in mind. I don't know anything about Catholics. I am so sorry. Not my expertise. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use your cross imagery as you did as best as I can and forgive me if if I misrepresent something when it comes to a religion, I literally am so clueless. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's just go into this, shall we? All right, so let's talk about the changes I made on this character. So first off was coming up with his pose. I like to try and make my poses similar-ish to the ones you guys do, just so I'm not going way off. For this pose, I kind of thought a cool thing he could be doing is kind of like lounging back in an in visible chair. So uh, in your brain, imagine he's sitting at a chair behind like a really big desk and he's, you know, commanding the rest of his mafia. So I posed out this kind of crossed leg look. I actually ended up moving his arms, but I kind of posed them out where he's kind of speaking to you. And then it came to fleshing his whole body out. I actually ended up wanting to include his knife somewhere since that seems to be a very important tool since it has been sketched out separately. So I decided to have him holding his knife in one hand and then the other one is kind of out as he gestures to speak to us. So from there I went into his clothes and his hair. I went with basically the same style for his hair. Didn't really see a reason to change it but for his clothes I think that's the biggest difference I <laughs> definitely made. So as I said I'm going for a more modern look but I do still want to kind of incorporate a bit of this original design. So I went for this long jacket. I found some references of kind of modern day you Yakuza fashion. So I decided to go for that jacket. It definitely makes him seem very much more like a leader and more serious than uh, having, you know, just this collared tank top shirt thing. The jacket definitely helps make him seem more serious and, you know, in charge than the v-neck tank top thing. <laughs> and I'm gonna get rid of the crop top too. That's gone. I did end up keeping the V on his V-neck. You know, nice character trait to have underneath. Didn't see a reason to get rid of that, but it's then covering the rest of him. I decided to roll his sleeves up just so he's a little bit more, you know, not proper, just to add a bit more to that gangster look. I also decided to kind of keep his belt. I'm gonna make it into a belt buckle and belt thing. And then for his pants and shoes, again, I'm going for a more modern look. So I'm going to give him these like high cuff pants and these more business-like shoes that are a bit high top and I also decided to give him gloves like the gloves he has in the original but these are more just straight black gloves as well as to kind of just give him a bit of accessories I give him some bracelets since he's very accessorized in his original design 
kind of figured we should keep the accessories going. And I also included that necklace again and also his earrings as to keep some more things included. And I also just threw in a chain off his belt. Just another new accessory to kind of tie the whole thing together. So when it comes to colors, I quickly realized that this character includes literally every color of the rainbow. So not only is it pastel, but it's as many colors as humanly possible. I was suffering a lot. So I knew immediately there was no way in hell I would include every single one of these and I would have to narrow it down to the most important stuff. And I already knew I was going to get rid of the pastel. So that also was playing a part. I've said it before in other videos, but when it comes to picking colors, less is more. The less colors you have, the more unified your character becomes. When you start throwing every color humanly possible on a character, then everything kind of just becomes disjointed and it's as if you just like kind of farted colors out on your canvas without any actual thought put into why the colors are there. So I will say it's better to have less colors. I also think it's good if you reuse colors where you can. So if you have two places that are blue and Instead of picking two different blues, just reuse the same blue, just again to help unify the whole thing. So just less colors makes a piece more cohesive. And it will also save you a lot of time when you draw the character multiple times in the future. If you have less colors that you have to then go pick and put in the character and then pick and then put in the character and blah 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 blah. If you have such a small number of colors, then your time will not be wasted. With that out of the way, let's talk about what changes I did make. His hair and his skin. I actually lightened his hair just a bit. His hair and his skin were very similar in color so I actually ended up just tanning him a little bit more and I also will later change his hair again but I lighten his hair just a bit just so you can differentiate between the two colors a bit better. I know a lot of people when they use line art have a hard time telling that the two colors are almost the same so if you ever are wondering just put the two next to each other like right on top of each other in a color splotch and and you will probably be able to see how close the colors are. If not, you can always do the grayscale trick where you make everything black and white and that'll really help you show how close your colors are to one another. I kept his eyes the same, just brown. No need to do anything there. So for his outfit, I really did change it a lot. So the first thing I went into was his jacket. I went for that black color because it was a, you know, suede suit jacket. And then I used that same black on his gloves and also on the earrings he's wearing, just at multiple places with the same color. His shirt, I decided to use that light blue that the main color of the original shirt is. And then I actually just darkened it a little bit because it's a pastel. It was like as high up on my color square as possible. So I just darkened it down a bit so it's not such a light, light white color. His knife, I kept all the same colors, but then I actually took the gem color that was in the center of it and I changed it. I change it a few times because I'm trying to unify some other parts. Uh, you'll see I make his belt this green as well. So I'm trying to also make it, you know, match that, but also make sure it stands out between the two colors so they're not, you know, blending in. Again, an issue with all those pastels is they're all blending in together. So I wanted to get away from that. And then in order to bring some other colors from your rainbow of colors, I implemented the red and the yellow from that rainbow palette into the bracelets. And I just made the yellow one more like a gold light color. And then the red is just this darker maroon color. I then also brought that into the pants, but I will actually change the hue later to blue to just unify the pants color with the shirt as well as kind of darken it so it fits the jacket as well. And then for the shoes, I used that black once again. I actually used the red from that bracelet for the highlight color on the shoes as well. Yeah, that's Hugo's new look. So I said in the beginning, I'm not a fan of a lot of the clothing choices that the original Hugo had. I know there is quite a lot of people who really like the like pretty boy kind of character look. I personally uh, don't enjoy that character type at all. It's uh, not my thing, but the redesign I made very much is my type. If that that says anything about me. I highly prefer this suave, jacketed, bad boy type character than the half clothed, light colored bad boy type character, if you will. So I totally understand if you're someone who enjoys a character who looks like Hugo. But again, this is a personal thing. It's probably not a character I would ever pick 
as like my favorite of a bunch or even, you know, make in my own stories. I'm not a huge fan of the girly pretty boy, if you will. I don't know what else to call it. If there's a specific word for the like type of character Hugo is, let me know because I just keep saying stuff. Probably none of them are actually the correct terminology. So sorry if I offended anyone. I'm just trying to describe him as basic as I possibly can. Again, no need to do anything I did. These are all just a little bit of a crit for me and just some ideas and maybe it'll help with other characters you come up with in the future. And again, sorry if I got the time period wrong. My bad. <laughs> all right, let's uh, go to the last one then, shall we? This character was submitted by Trash the Artist, again on my Discord. Forgive me because I will pronounce his name wrong. This is Haiguk. He is 17 and he is part husky. He has ADHD. He is Korean and he's pretty tall for his age, but he acts like a baby and needs constant supervision or he'll accidentally injure himself. He is extremely curious. He's also pretty innocent because he never seems to pay attention. He has never stayed in a single school for a very long time because people were hoping that changing scenery would help this is a very simple character. He's very cute. Just some of the things that I noted we can probably work with for him. One is those colors. The color palette's a bit all over the place. Some things are too bright while other things are kind of washed out. So we're gonna see how we can kind of unify his whole look together a bit more. And then also kind of want to play a bit more with those husky features with the ears and maybe a tail thrown in there as well. So a lot of the changes are just gonna be very, very simple. It's a half animal character in our modern world so the specific clothing you know just gonna be some everyday clothes I think we can really emphasize the playful nature of this character in his clothing and even in his hairstyle as well so let's just see what we can do, shall we? Okay, so let's talk about some of the changes I made. So first things first was getting the pose. I'm going full body for all of these. So I wanted to make sure it was in a pose that represents this character. So I decided to give him this kind of mid-run pose and give him those key signs to relate it to the original pose he had. You'll watch me uh, struggle for quite a bit to get the proportions on the body right. I had to make the drawing very very small on my canvas <laughs> so it could fit this 16 by 9 ratio so a lot of tinkering and redrawing happened here but once I got the body as good as I thought I was gonna get it I went into the rest of the design so I obviously gave him the husky ears and I wanted to keep his hair as close as possible to his original since we're covering up his regular human ears here I am giving him very very shaggy hair and making it kind of long so it will cover where the ears would be. Uh, I'm also gonna give him the glasses like he has. I think big round glasses are always a very nice trait to have on a cute kid character. So they can either make them look like a mad scientist or they can accentuate the eye size so they make the eyes really big and cute. So for the outfit, I didn't actually stray too far from the outfit here. I just kind of exaggerated the length of the sweater he is wearing. I decided to really push that this is a very oversized sweatshirt and doesn't actually fit him very well so it's kind of going over his waist and his fingers are kind of poking out as if the sweatshirt is too big for him. I also added some strings in the front to kind of help make this look like a sweatshirt and it kind of adds a little movement to the pose as well and then I just decided to give him regular pants and I was gonna give him these high top shoes kind of converse-esque. He's a teen you know so we don't want to stray too far from what a teenager would wear. So colors, I really liked the whole black and white half and half thing, but I really wanted to make it more in the pattern that a husky has. Huskies seem to have more of a like black on top, white on bottom kind of thing going, especially since that's how their tail works. And then the ear hits the black outside, white inside of the ear. So I wanted to put that in his hair as well. So I decided to go for a kind of black on top, white on bottom for his hair color. Otherwise, I kind of really like this look and it also helps unify his hair with his tail as well as make his ears fit as well. And now for his skin, I actually changed a little bit. I thought the specific peach tone you chose was kind of blending with the white of his hair a bit too much. So I made it a bit more on the, I guess, yellow side. Since the white of the hair was already kind of brownish, I wanted to change the skin so it wouldn't blend in so much. So eyes 
for this character, I really like the heterochromia because it's a very common thing in animals to have heterochromia, more common in animals than it is in humans. And blue eyes and brown eyes are two very common eye colors for huskies. The two husky references I had actually, one had blue eyes and one had brown eyes, so it was kind of a happy accident there. So I figured why not keep that since he is kind of part animal. So the heterochromia really fits him well. And now for his clothing, I started with the base color as that same blue you had for the sweatshirt and then I just kind of played around with it for a while until I adjusted it to a tone I kind of like and then instead of this galaxy pattern I went over with this kind of wash-esque kind of brush I have with this pink color like you had for the galaxy and it kind of just makes the sweatshirt look a bit acid washed instead of having to deal with this crazy galaxy pattern every time you draw him instead you kind of just do a sweep over the sweatshirt with this light pink color and then you just have this nice random opacity wash to the outfit. It's that kind of look as if you like throw a piece of clothing into just a whole ton of bleach. That's kind of what acid washing is. Letting your clothes sit in bleach for a while. <laughs> so it seems like a kind of funny thing. Maybe he accidentally got a lot of bleach on his clothes. <laughs> it seems like something this character would do. Yeah and then for his shoes I just wanted to relate them back to that pink in the outfit. So I made them this pink color with the white pattern before and I also put the white in the pom-poms and then his glasses I did the glasses on a different layer so I just colored the line art to a kind of lightish green one that wasn't too bright and strong that stood out from the other colors but also didn't distract and then under that I just threw a 10 opacity white layer just to kind of give it this last look so yeah that is it for this character I said in the beginning there wasn't crazy lot that I thought I could do but but it's just the little things that hopefully will help out pushing this character a little more into whatever else you use him for. And again, you don't need to do anything I did, but hopefully you have some ideas for other things as well that you can do in the future. Well, that's it for this video. That's another five OCs done. I noticed about halfway through that I had somehow only chosen male characters this time. That was not intentional. So in order to make up for the five males I drew this time in the next video in this series, I'm gonna do girls only. So if you have a female or female presenting character that you would like me to take a crack at doing this critique on, please, please, please join my Discord server. The link is in the description below. It's a really nice place. Everyone in the community there is so friendly and and so supportive and I'm so happy that people are sharing their work there but that is the best place to share your character with me there is a submission page in the group for videos where you can send a image of your character and then a very short bio please include a very 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 short I mean it when I say short please do not give me a whole essay a very short description of the universe that this takes place in including time period a lot of people have not told me the time period it takes place in and I have been making my best guess so please include that and then a very short description of the character themselves when I say that it does not mean give me their life story it means tell me a bit about their personality and the environment that they live in and maybe how they interact with things whatever you think is important but again please I don't want essays because I will probably not use your character if you give me a novel <laughs> if you already submitted and I didn't get to you, don't resubmit the same character, but you are welcome to submit a different character. You can also submit male characters. I'm not gonna say no to any more dudes, but they won't be in the next video. They'll just have to be in a different video. So for the next video, it will be girls only, and then after that, it'll be whatever happens, happens. If you have been in the video, don't submit any more characters because I probably will not double up on people. I'm just getting so many submissions that there is no way I can do more than one character per person. And I want to make sure everyone gets a fair chance to get a character looked at and talked
talked about in this series. So just to end, I hope that this was helpful. If I got to your character, I hope I did them justice. <laughs> Don't feel as if I'm forcing you to change anything. A lot of it comes from just my experience with character design and color theory. And also I have a background in animation. So a lot of my choices will be animation based as to what makes a character easier to animate basically. For those of you who don't have a character in this video or haven't submitted, you're welcome to still submit. But if you don't want to, I hope these videos are helpful to you as well. I hope that you're getting something out of this. Maybe some of the advice I gave to some of these other people somehow apply to your character as well. And you can take a crack at giving your characters a bit of a glow up. I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for being here and supporting me and just being such a great community. You guys are all so wonderful and I'm so grateful you're all here. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the things that the YouTubers say. Peace.